Um, so, uh, first of all, um, before starting anything else, uh, we're gonna talk about a well feature uh, called lines and veils. Uh, because uh, not all people may be comfortable with uh, everything. Uh, changing can deal with some pretty dark and touchy subject for some people. Uh, and lines and veils is it to uh, assure that your um, experience isn't ruined by this. Um, so lines are things you do not want to see in the game even mentioned. Like some people cannot like uh, child abuse or uh, anything really that you do not feel comfortable even thinking about. Uh, we get on a consensus and establish that in line that will not come in the game. We all agree about that. Veils are um, things you are comfortable with, but either don't really are comfortable with. Uh, exploring too much or don't really want to bother like um, sexual encounters, for an example, it's think that, all right, this happened, we fade to black, no need to narrate it. So does anyone has anything uh, they want to add to this list? They can be renegotiated re if uh, everyone is okay with it. And if... Uh... Do you already have a set list? No. I don't. Okay. I'm comfortable with most things. Right. I'm Everyone trying probably to. Probably knows me best over here, so he knows I'm probably mostly comfortable with most things. But it's like, yeah. ah, you know, you know, they get to bed, fade yeah. to black, it's fine, whatever. Let's keep yeah. moving with the action. Yes. Yeah, uh, I... Twenty minutes of erotic roleplay online. <laughs> oh, Especially on voice. In yeah. Voice yeah. with other people watching. Real. <laughs> That is um, not the kind of game I signed for. But yes, I'm not really uncomfortable with it, but it's kind of awkward. Yes, it's not so... the it's not the point. Yes, uh, so that's a veil, for example. Uh, yes, when right. you uh, when you said anything said it, I was thinking of lines. But yes, um, I'm not uh, against describing someone who's acting in a sexual way or is attractive, uh, but I'm not going to spend like. 10 minutes saying, going into details, you know. Yeah. It's just not really that interesting to me. And it's um, not the point of the game. It can, yeah, it can be bad for the game, but it's not really the point. I mean, the point is about the life of your character. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, also, yeah, we have a limit with Twitch. We can't really go into too much. Um, you know, details. And, and technically you do, but uh, they just demonetize you anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll try not to do that. Um, but yeah, lines can be even about phobias, like if someone has a phobia of needles. Uh, and I have a friend, a very good friend of mine, with which I do roleplay, uh, which uh, once told me was arachnophobic and didn't even want to have anything described uh, because it really unsettles him. That kind of stuff. No, it doesn't have to be justified. Like, uh, I mean justified. You don't have to justify yourself. Uh, obviously, Chandling has some core team of, uh, well, kidnapping, uh, abuse, desolation, some sometimes even sexual undertone to it uh, because of a core concept of the game. Um, can also treat a bit about body dysmorphia with the fetch or that kind of stuff. Uh, but other than that, I try not to go into the gory kind of horror. Um, I don't really. I don't really care for it. Uh, something I do try, but well, I do that, but I try not to go overboard. Um, all right, so everyone's cool for now? 
Yeah? Yeah. Yep. I'm cool right. with whatever. All right. Just remember, if uh, something comes up and you find you're not enjoying yourself, just I don't need to talk about it. Uh, we can always up that vibe, but why don't we just gonna put in veils like up sexual encounters? All right. So. Um, I wanted to go around a bit, uh, first begin with everyone's character. Um, does anyone want to start? No. <laughs> That's okay. That uh, sounds so, like a volunteer. <laughs> uh, so it's what be the first one. Uh, basically what we're going to do, um, we are going to um, just go around who your character is, who he was, who, sorry, who they were. Um, sorry, I'm French, so I um, I don't have a neutral gender pronoun for everything, so I assume everything is either a she or he. It's like table is a she for me. It's, it's weird. Um, yep. Anyway. Um, so we're gonna go into who your character was before he was abducted, how he was abducted, by whom, or what, uh, what was his life in Arcadia, how did, she, how did they got out, and how are they now? Your character will be changing, not freshly escaped from the age, but you'll be still fairly new to the to your condition uh you haven't been around for long on this side of the age for quite some time or maybe not that depends on your character uh so i can roll a die if someone doesn't, <laughs> doesn't want to i can go first if no one else wants sure so my, mine is really bare bones. Yes. Um, before, right. before. Um, so uh, his name is Bill Gouzier. Mm -hmm. Varvin is the name he kind of stuck with after exiting uh, Arcadia, Arcadia and the Hedge. And um, basically, he was just not very remarkable when he was uh, a human before he was taken lived mm -hmm. in new orleans i think that was what i put down and uh didn't yeah di didn't really stand out that much he got uh abducted in the midst of hurricane katrina in 2005 and got taken to arcadia by a fish fascinated uh fay that mm -hmm. actually took quite a lot of people during katrina to make some kind of fairy aqu aquarium where he had them um eat each other try and survive in the murky darkness and All right. some kind of um, fairy mangrove um, fairy swamp mm -hmm. and somehow uh, which since I think we're not supposed to s remember much of our stay in Arcadia not at the start you remember key events but much of it is included and only comes in dreams or fragmented memories mm -hmm. and so basically uh, when Hurricane Ike struck the town that we're in which I already forgot the name of uh, that's fine because I forgot. <laughs> I forgot too. Uh, that's just fantastic. Uh, it's um... oh, it's gonna come back to me. It's not Natchez. It's no, no. It's not Natchez. It's uh... New, New Acadia. I think. New Acadia. No. New Abeya. Yeah, yeah. It's New Abeya. New. 
can't find it. Yeah. Anyway, when uh, when Ike uh, ravaged the area, the um, Fay used this as another channel to go to the real world and try and abduct some more people. And since he had, um, since Varvin had uh, managed to eat quite a lot of his um, uh, of his fellow inmates he had the strength to chew through the mangrove and find a way out and got spat out by the typhoon and ended up in the area he hasn't he he's he's been very very confused for a long time and he's kind of well when he when he rejoined the spring court um in the area, he kind of embraced the whole denial thing, and so he he doesn't he tries not to think about New Orleans and about what happened during those three years. He assumes that he's been left uh, he's been taken for dead, and he doesn't really want to think about it. He works as a garbage man now because he really likes garbage. He's a gristle grinder, so he can eat about anything, and he really likes eating about anything that he can find during his job. All right. And that's about it. He's really tall, really tough, really strong, really nice, too, a bit slow, and that's about it. I'm going to ask a few questions uh, yeah, to sure. flesh out just a bit more of his life. All right. So, uh, before you were taken, taken mm -hmm. what was the most important promise Vervan made? Someone uh, else? Most important promise Does, ever made. Did someone made a promise to you? Mm. To your character, sorry. That's. Uh... Can I maybe like think about these questions? Of course. Most important, but like, who has his? Does he know his full name? His family? Does he still have a family? Uh, he probably has still has a family. I didn't go into um, much detail about this, but yeah, he probably still has some family in New Orleans because it's unlikely that they all died in the in in the hurricane. Um. Does his mask resemble his whole form, or has he changed so much during his durance that it doesn't look like the man he used to? To no, his, his mask is still fairly similar to um, to his uh, human appearance. Uh, did he come from a? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, go he ahead. Might, he might have gotten a bit a bit taller and a bit thicker, but he's all right. Uh, basically the same. So he's the same mentally too, socially too. Like uh, he he was he he got considerably slower and more animalistic in Arcadia. All like right. There's, he he's not completely there, and it shows. He's he's still very much in the uh, eat, sleep, repeat mode that he had to be. Um, in the in the murky waters of his keeper's domain. All right, your captivity now. Uh huh. Uh, did you make any promise to your keeper? Did your keeper make any promise to you? Did you make any promise to other changelings? Did you make a promise to yourself while you were there? Um, I I could see him promising uh, other maybe another changeling to help them escape and then forgetting about it as he All as right. he made his own escape not or, that dumb that's important yeah if you want it to be that way of course yeah of course of course i'm i'm just rifling off on this bit all right tell me when you're ready for the next question yeah uh, uh, go ahead uh, how were you taken? Was it about the edge itself? Did your keeper come for you? Did he send someone else? 
Did it say something else? Was there any witnesses? Do you remember at all? Hmm. I think he was uh, taken among the hurricane and uh, like among the water and the wind and the debris. And there was uh, probably something, maybe like Varvin, is, he's not sure if it was a hob, if it was a huntsman or maybe his own keeper because his keeper didn't really show itself that much. He no. mostly watched uh what unfolded in in his domain without um acting directly but some kind of weird uh, uh, uh underwater creature that dragged them through the hurricane and into Ar arcadia into the the watery he hedge and then into Ar arcadia all right uh what was your keeper title like did she acknowledge you in any way? Um, I it? gotta confess, I don't really know how titles work. You can leave that up to me then. Yeah, I'll <laughs> I'll leave that up to you and very well. I, I trust you with this. Um, I'll I have an idea, but uh, I'll see. I want to hear the other players uh, first. Uh, sure. Uh, sorry, uh, before going into the title, but your escape, how did you escape? Did someone witness your escape or what was the last throw? Did you sneak out? I um, kind of brute forced my way into the hedge, but waited for the keeper to be away to, to try and do this. All right. <clears throat> uh, so when you were back, um, what did you seek first? Did you seek your family? Did you seek your old town? Do you have a fetch? Do you even know if you have a fetch? I have no idea if I have a fetch. Um, the first thing, like, like I said, he was uh, fairly animalistic when he got out the the trauma was was pretty intense and so he actually kept on living in the bayou sleeping in like um ditches in the mud and stuff like that and he he actually probably came back to civilization through meeting other changelings in the bayou that found this big old guy just rummaging through the mud and eating raw fish All right. straight from the ponds. Good. I have an idea even uh, for someone who might have found you and brought you into changing society. Um, but now that you're back, um, how do you feel about your new life? What do you do to remind yourself you're not in Arcadia anymore. Um, How do you cope with it? He mostly... He's, he's happy to have friends. He's, he relies a lot on, on his motley and his friends because uh, back in Arcadia, basically everything was either prey or predator. So he's, he's very, very happy to have friends and very friendly and sometimes maybe a bit too trusting. And uh, he also really enjoys, like, he he enjoys um, cooked food. And although he snacks a lot on garbage and stuff like that, he really enjoys cooked food. And like, in general, the comforts of civilized society. He's mm -hmm. got uh, his touchstone is a restaurant owner. It's called Maman Mulot. And who he he kind of took as his substitution mother. So you your character still enjoys food. Do he enjoy the feeling of anger? Do he does a part of him miss that simple life of eating um, and just be and feeling yeah, the void? Probably, like he enjoys the 
the the comforts of civilized society and at the same time he's sometimes a bit taken aback it's all a bit too complex for him and he he relies heavily on others to help him navigate this kind of uh, the the social situations and like he wouldn't he wouldn't be able to do his taxes if his life depended on it on him mm. as a gristle grinder mm. you have tested changing flesh how do you feel about that does the test still linger in you well it's this the taste is like he probably doesn't actually remember and crave the taste of changing changeling flesh because he hasn't uh tasted it again yet but i think that he f if he was to taste it again he he'd really like it like you don't mm. you don't get rid of it that easy and he's horrified at the idea like he doesn't want to eat people because he's nice he wants to be nice to people but somewhere deep down there's probably this probably this, yeah. this taste that lingers and that would uh, likely um have his instinct instincts kick in in a way that he wouldn't be happy at all about i see yeah, well, I think for now we got to get to know Vavon pretty well. Wonderful. Um, who wants to go next? No one? Maybe we roll that dice? I'm going to roll on. dice. All right. Just got to clear my throat. I could go next if you want. Sure. There we go. All right. So I guess I'll just uh, go ahead and start with uh, describing him. Uh, Twitch is a nice, lanky fellow with a well-toned body. When fully in his uh, changeling uh, form, uh, he has fur and spots of a cheetah that replaces his beard around his face, and he has a pair of vestigial wings on his back. The uh, veins of his feathers and the spots of his fur all glow in different colors with different emotions that he's feeling. Uh, for his background, I got a nice little story here. All right. All right. It's only a couple paragraphs. Let's see how it works out. Oh, just, uh, sorry. Just before we go out, I forgot about the court of Evan uh, Spring. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. So, how does Vervon... Handle spring. Spring is a very social court. Spring is all about desire. Uh, oh. Spring is about bringing back the wonders of fairy to the to you. It's about more than survival. It's about getting comfortable. Yeah, he's he, um somehow he he probably joined he he joined it because it seemed like the easiest to him at first and he's um he's very much uh in, interested in um how do you say instant satisfaction mm, but... whether it's through food he's also a very you know, he's he's very very much fascinated by shiny things like he calls them shinies and he will do a lot of things just to get shinies and if if there's one in particular that catches his eye the the desire aspect is also this like he 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 craves these little nuggets of instant satisfaction because it helps him forget about the all the horrible things he's done but spring has a darker side too spring hmm? uh revolve around desire but your desire not not solely the desires of others. And some spring courtiers are known to abuse it and use their connection and power to get what they want from others in a fashion very much like the true fae. Not all of them, but it is known to happen. Mm -mm -mm -mm. How does he feel about that? Um, I think a lot of it 
actually goes over his his head, he would probably be upset if he realized that some of them aren't just in it for the fun of it, but are really trying to uh, uh, to mess other people up or to 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 mess them over to to try and get the heart's desire but that's also because he his own desires for now are pretty simple oh. shinies food comfort he's he's really simple that could evolve but he's not really involved in the um court politics at all like he'd probably he'd probably do whatever another member of the court asked him to do hmm. and maybe some, as long as it's not um revolting and 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 violent and he wouldn't go and kill someone but he would do a lot of things to please his other um so he has his fellow courtiers all right so he has a need to please people yeah he does he does have a need to please people and to um conform to other people's desires hmm. and that that's that that might also be a reason why he was drafted into the spring court because some of these less scrupulous members might have seen like he's he's useful he's he really useful because he, he doesn't yeah. ask questions all right we can go back to twitch all right then so I'll go ahead and get to his background then. Uh, let's see. Twitch grew up in a uh, small parish not far from New Orleans. His family pushed him to study, but he preferred to be outdoors uh, to the outdoors to doing homework. In his teen years, he began free running in New Orleans, ignoring his parents' pleas to join a sports team to quote do something useful with his talents. Before he could even graduate, he encountered a strange cat with a pink ribbon on his run that he wanted to pet. When it fled, he gave chase, falling up and down roofs, over fences, and straight into the hedge. When taken by the Fae, Twitch was taken by the Steward of the Empty Sky, forced into a hunting pack that would attack those on the grounds around the Silver Palace, killing and injuring them, only for them to return to life once more in eternal agony. One time, the singer refused to sing, and the Steward became mad and tortured them. Chaos reigned, and many took their chance to escape, Twitch included. Finally escaping, he discovered slowly that 30 years had passed. It was no longer 1990, but 2019. Even though only a handful of years had passed for him. His family had moved on, and some loser was using his name now as a doctor. He had no money, no ID, no life. But he had the bare skills he developed in the hedge, and his ability to run. Now he runs with local groups, and his new associates in the Freehold, trying to build a life he never got to have. And that would be that story. All right. We're going with some question as well. Again, right. before being taken away, did you make any promises to someone? Maybe like a shadow promise friend of friends? Like... Uh, a uh, child promising to each other they'll always be friends no matter what, or did someone I can imagine quite a lot of that going down. So it's kind of hard to like, uh, but was this his... one would be the most right. important? I'll yes. show up for your birthday, I swear. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll totally about... be there for you anytime you need. It's about the dedication, even if Twitch might not have taken uh, this promise as. Seriously, yes. Uh, the other party to whom involved, the other party might have felt so strongly that um, maybe it was their memory of Ascent that drew him out of the edge and guide them through Earth. So maybe they remembered me very, very fondly when I said something like, "Yeah, I'll definitely be there for you, man." Maybe um, a nice little sentimental childhood moment and. Then suddenly it's drawing him back. Maybe. It's possible. But it seems like you know who Twitch was before um, 
before his disappearance, but he did disappear for a time before his fetch took his place. Did his parents search for him? Did she just... He just went running one day, and for one week he didn't show up, but one day came out of the swamps. Uh, I like to imagine that uh, his parents would definitely go looking for him at this point. Uh, as soon as he disappears, they definitely would be worried. They want their son to do well, but he kind of ignores them. They but would. I suppose when they find the fetch, they're none the wiser that their real son has disappeared forever. Very well. Now, I, when you were taken to Arcadia, this cat, who was it? Was it your keeper in another form? A hobgoblin? An huntsman sending his pet? Or was it just an illustration from the edge? That's a good question. I was, was it even thinking... another changeling? Hmm. Maybe it could be. Maybe Twitch doesn't really know. He definitely didn't see it again during his whole time. It was someone just trying to have some fun or was worried themselves. Maybe it was just some entity that lives in the hedge. Didn't really have a stake in anything. Does he think about it? Hmm. I think so. I think there's some curiosity to it. Curiosity always kills the cat. Or drags you into the hedge, kicking and screaming. You know, one, one or the other. When he was in the kingdom of the steward, how did he view his keeper? You were a beast made to hunt others. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't really know why. You were distant from the steward, but more close than the people you were hunting. A steward did like his realm quiet. And not a lot happened. You were bad from the Silver Palace, but did you fraternize with some of the beasts in the dark? Or maybe did, did you spare someone? Or did you observe other, you're not sure if they were human, goblins or other, but making their life in the dark? I think so. Uh, I believe I've even talked to Taz a little bit about uh, talking to one of the other hounds and forming a bond. And I yeah, believe well. together we, in fact, escaped. What do we. Well, all right, so you made a promise. Did you make a promise together? Did you make an oath? Hmm. Taz, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What kind of oath do you think we would make between each other? Wait. Wait. Um, uh, An oath to not kill any more people here? Not cause more pain and suffering? Uh, I was thinking more along the lines of a blood bro oath, really. Hmm. Since we did escape together and we spilled blood together. <laughs> All right. Okay, then. Did someone witness your escape? Someone who did not come with you? Is there someone you would want to go take back and bring them home? Do you or you, you, you are um, a chimera. You are close to Goblin. You are more close than other changing are. During your escape, mm -hmm. Did you make any bargain with some goblins to help you? Hmm. Or did you just tear them into pieces with your claws? I'd like to imagine that perhaps during the escape, could probably have had a couple goblins also try to escape in the same direction. Maybe we tried to do our best to get out of the hedge together. Which cares about other people, even strange, weird goblin people. Once you were back, where did you first emerge? Was it near your home? Did you seek out your family? Uh, yeah, let's say somewhere just outside New Orleans. Maybe, maybe I just literally climb out of Lake Pontchartrain or something. Just stumbling and wet up the hillside, up the, uh, what are those things called? The levees. 
Did your family move? Yes, indeed. Family has moved and gone away already. Difficult to find, but maybe he could hunt them down. But he got most of his information from his fetch. But your fetch, how well do you know him? Does he know? Do you think he knows? Have you really interacted with him? Have you revealed the truth? Or do you just stalk him? Uh, you... I may have gone in for sort of a checkup or the like. And they may have gone along nicely. They are in some way the same person. And but... Twitch has always liked other people. But <clears throat> the uh, real Twitch is more like a reminder of the past for the fetch. And, well, I suppose they talked a little bit about uh, history together a little bit. So the oh, yeah, I had, I had someone like that. Why don't you tell me about yours? Ah, so the fetch doesn't know. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I'm not entirely sure. But mm. I would say the fetch definitely uh, is in the mood to keep his own life safe and keep uh, this weird hobo that wandered in maybe at a safe distance. All right. But, you know, a friendly talk is fine, right? Yes. Um, hmm. Did the fetch did something while he was boring? Twitch live at did he broke some promises? Did he make some decision Twitch does not approve of? Hmm. Well, he did actually uh get educated and <laughs> become a doctor and start a family and do all these things of sitting around and focusing that Twitch just doesn't really do a whole lot of. It's possible he's grown distant to all those childhood friends, and it just completely disassociated from this past life Twitch used to understand. Does Twitch want his life back? Well, he simply doesn't have one. But he does. He's Fedge does. Is he jealous of that? Well, ultimately, that life is the life he didn't want. Still, it's better than what you had in Arcadia. This is true. All right, now that you're back from Arcadia, how are you coping with it? Uh, I'm going to say probably the same way Twitch always has. He runs. He runs around town. He goes to and fro. He wakes up in the morning and starts running with... I believe I've given a name to someone now. Let's see what it was. With a local runner, David Brand. Socializing with each other on the run in the morning hours where it's all lonely. And all right. sharing a bit of company. He maybe gets a better impression of what the world's really like now. But Twitch. more importantly, gets a little bit of companionship. Does he have a lot of friends already? Who found him? Did he found Changing Society on his own? Did he ask some goblins? Hmm. You know, goblins actually seem like a good idea. They probably already knew, and he did help out a whole bunch. Surely it's a couple of them could point them in a uh, direction for help. You are a chimera. You know to deal with goblin. That's true. But if goblin were that important to you or are that friendly to you, maybe you should take the upkin merit. Uh, the which merit? Upkin, where goblins okay. view you as sort of a, a strange cousin. Hmm. Maybe I'll think about that. That could maybe replace market sense or something like that. So I'll go ahead and consider like what I want to shuffle around for that. How does Twitch feel about changing society? From what you've seen of it, it's a bit strange. I think Twitch uh, actually doesn't know a whole lot about changeling society. He just sees a bunch of weird people, and, well, weird people aren't that weird. They're just people he needs to talk to, right? But he knows enough to have joined the cool. Autumn, because of the mm. fear and sorcery. Why? 
Is he afraid? Oh, Does most he... definitely. Anxious and twitchy is, in fact, how one might describe Twitch. Does he want to master his fear? Or does he relish the adrenaline? Ah, uh, sorry. The feeling of fear in his guts when he's running and think someone is behind it. Maybe a bit of both. Maybe as apprehensive as he is about uh, nearly everything, he does get a little bit of a kick about running and uh, getting away from something. Adam isn't just about fear. It's about ritual, occult secrets, knowledge. Forbidden knowledge. Does that interest you? Does that interest you? Oh, definitely. Hey, do you see that fence over there that says no entry and the boarded up windows? I bet I could get in there. I definitely hmm. want to know what no one wants me to. Even after where Arcadia. nobody wants me to be. If you're after Arcadia, you still want to wander in some dangerous, creepy place. But it's right there. I mean, it can't be that dangerous, right? Right? All right. I think that's enough for Twitch for now. Okay. Does anyone want to go next? Uh, I can go next. Go ahead. All right. Where should I start? Well, I've seen your background. You want to play a changing that have been taken more than a century ago. Long ass. Oh. Long oh, time ago. We got two old bees. High five. Well, <laughs> really long time ago. This can this can definitely happen. However, it would mean that your character will be lost among the lost. No re living relatives. Totally alien, strange world. No one to remember him. It can be hard dealing with that. Very hard. Yep. No fetch. Nothing. Piece of your soul gone. Taken away. And you'll probably never know what happened. Yeah, but um, I don't know. When I imagined his backstory, I probably figured he was already kind of used to being estranged from everybody just because of his own nature and how he was a jerk. <laughs> it, is, it is possible to be a bit aloof with other people, but most changing came back to us seeking some sort of stability. Something they knew, something they longed to see again, or someone. Your character has none of that. Yeah, it was definitely less about like finding something or running towards something and more just running away, you know? So, what was the life before they were taken? Um, Who were they? <laughs> a very uh, typical kind of a rich jerk. He studied at Eton, went to Oxford after that, did, you know, fencing, drinking, got in with the, uh, you know, like, local art countercultures. He was an artist's model. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, floating around, partying, not doing anything, you know, really responsible or uh, substantial. Mm. Is he on the records? Is he what? Is he on the records? Do, can we have a paper tra trail prove he existed before Arcadia? Or I'm sorry, I think it cut out for a second. Uh, does he have a paper trail to prove he existed before Arcadia? Or oh, no? Um... Well, he definitely has a few, you know, paintings where obviously the figure looks like him. Um, I imagine there's less of a paper trail for him, more of a paper trail for uh, his brother, who was the actual, you know, heir of the family, the, the rich man that did things. All right. Does the family have any descendant that's still living today? Or has it fallen into history? Probably they do have some descendants. Yeah. Um, are they in the region? Are they what? In the region? You know, maybe so, yeah. <laughs> All right. Another um, very, uh, probably another estranged black sheep of the family. 
Did he make any promises before being taken to Arcadia? Not that they would matter, no, because the person met them, well, with who he met them, would definitely me be dead unless they were taken too. Um, he did probably make a promise. Yeah, probably to his brother, you know, another um bender, and then his brother's like, you've got to do something with your life. And he's like, yes, okay, I promise, I'll turn my life around, I'll change. So he remembers. All right, so it must, be, must have been very important to him. Well, maybe not at the time, but no, it must be. Yes. Hmm. Now we're going to, well, he's kidnapping. I get a very background, and you have a pretty idea how you, you keep her appeared to you. She, he, they. They took you, they took a liking to you. They went from Arcadia to her age and right into Earth, and they took you. Their name, however, is not as simple. It's not an, someone with a name that took you. It's a title. Mm -hmm. It's a keeper. They never give the title name. Or if they have a name, it's something evocative like Red Mary, Grandmother, or Lord of Thunder, Form Preacher. Sometimes it's not even a name that takes you, it's a title that takes you. It's that you never see a true fate. Mm -hmm. So, who was this keeper? Who were they? Well, Honest didn't think of a proper title. It's all right. We can come up with one later. Well, basically, uh, she was a very uh, fickle, spoiled, I would say young lady, but obviously not. Um, yeah, just someone who liked games, liked playing with people, liked playing games with people that didn't go so well for them. All right. Sounds like a true fate. <laughs> we can come up with a name for... She was a she, so... She is a she. Or oh, appear as one. Is that right? She what? She's, well, this fae is a she, or oh, appear as one, correct? Appears as one, yeah. Hmm. So, from what I read, I read your keeper took you through the edge, seduced you, or maybe incited you. Incited you, but they tricked you. Yep. But there was some willingness to come on your part, wasn't it? Um, not so much willingness to come, so much as... Imprudence? Ignorance? Yeah, and some ignorance, yeah, definitely. So... Hmm, it was fooled. Yeah. During his durance, what are you... Well... You... Who were you to your keeper? What were you? You're a forest, so unlike other changing, you were somewhat prized. You were beautiful, mannered, perhaps, or not, but you existed at the wing of your keeper. You were to be perfect, but to reflect their perfection. You were just a background character, but you were present. You must have been present in the life. Well, life. Story of your keeper. Otherwise, she would have not made you a fairest. Yep, yeah, definitely. Um, he was essentially like a, like a prized poodle, a little dog. And, you know, you have it follow you around all the time. It's in your handbag. You put little scarfs on it. Um, Was she yeah. proud of you? Or proud of what she did to you? Of you of her ownership over you 
yes, definitely very, um, would probably show him off to people. So many of us came to look at the pretty new thing you keep her had. Yes. So you met a lot of, you know about, at least you remember a bit about uh, Fey politics, courtly affair, Byzantine laws and contracts. Yes, probably, yeah. How about you, Keith? Your gift is not in Kobok. We can create one. You want to be a muse, right? Yes. What does that mean? Why did, did your character was molded into his, its gift? Did it just happen to develop into it? Or did it search it? He was definitely modeled into it by a keeper. Why? What purpose did he serve? Well... Mostly because she thought it was funny, which was the same reason she took him in the first place. Because I, I specifically, uh, in the backstory, I talked about, uh, oh god, I don't want to butcher any French. <laughs> it's all right, don't worry. Uh, the, uh, the poem, uh, La Belle Dame Sans Merci. That... Yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, it's and... all right, it's... The pretty lady without mercy. Yes. And he modeled for a painting based off of that. And she happened to see it because honestly, it wasn't like she didn't just leave Arcadia for him. She was very hands on and getting changelings that interested her. Maybe she so, left Arcadia just for you this time, at least. Yes. Well, yes. How could um, you know? Yeah. And so she saw that and she was like, oh, you know what would be like really funny? And mm. then, of course, because he was an artist model, she was like about the muse thing. She was like, oh, you know what else would be really funny? All right. So, yeah. During his stay, did he fraternize with other changeling? Or was he alone? Well, made to be alone. He had some interactions with other changelings, but none of them would have been private and probably not very positive either. Was, was your keeper place a backstabbing court? Was it a palace? Was it someplace in the cloud or deep underground? Or was it? Was it beautiful or different or both? Definitely both. Um, I don't know, I imagined it kind of a forest-like, but definitely how you, <laughs> oh god, what a strange reference, um, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna make a reference, like in The Sims 4, there's that sylvan <laughs> forest, <laughs> and it's like a forest, but it's all weird and pink, and there's like shadows in the bushes, and they're watching you, and. All right. So, where the mystery was it a sense of paranoia among his servants? Did they watch out for the back, or was your character just not the black sheep? Um, I think, like among the changelings. Um, just Archibald, we can hear something in your mic. I don't know what it is. A buzzing noise. Mind. Yeah. It's good now. No, no worries. So, yes. What was Ren uh, like? Like, is, was everyone just competing for her intention or trying to avoid it? Probably a mixture of both. Like, they would want to get positive attention because if she liked them, then she would keep them around close, but at the same time avoiding her because they probably had a higher chance of surviving if she didn't look at them at all. All right. So the place was terrible, well, terrible and beautiful at the same time, but what made your character run away? Or could he run away? Did you try multiple times? Well, I think 
he was particularly disturbed, I feel, by the kind of, um, what's the term? I don't know, how he felt like he almost related to his keeper. Mm. And that was, like, one of the biggest motivators for him to leave and also to hate his keeper. When you... Yes. How did he leave? How did he left? Did, did he sneak? Did he fight his way through? Did he outwit his keeper or... The, or guards? <laughs> lied? Or did he make a bargain? Huh. Or was it a pure dumb luck? Probably some dumb luck, definitely. Um, he just kind of, she was so fickle and easily distracted. So it was easy to get away from her attention. And for escaping her, oh, I don't know how to pronounce that word, Demesne? Demen. Demen? Yes, it's an old French one for Demen. Oh, okay. Um, when escaping her Demen, oh God. Um, you said it right. Okay. Uh, it was mostly that, like, other people around there, other changelings in particular, kind of already knew that whenever he was around, it meant that she was nearby. And so they didn't bother him because they were like, oh, that's not. Did he throw someone under the bus to create an opportunity to escape? Oh, probably. That sounds like something he would do. All right. When he went to the edge and arrived on Earth, where did he arrive? In the region? Yeah. Was it the same region where he was taken? No. How did he end up here? Why? You know, I'm not quite sure. Hmm. Very well. And when he did arrive, then realized he was in a strange place with strange people. And and everything was weird. Everything yeah. was as weird as it was. Maybe a little less weird than what it was back in Akshelia. But when he found out that the world did move on without him, and for quite a long time, how did he feel about that? How long, was, how long did it took him to adjust? And who helped him adjust? Or did well, he just... I think he's probably still not really adjusted. He kind of... Um, that's not quite compartmentalizing, but kind of detached from the situation in the way he usually did, where he was like, oh, everything's weird. That sucks. I guess I'm going to be angry about it and do nothing else. All right. So instead of really coping with it, just kind of, you know. How does, how does, it, how does it fit in the local changing city? Truly, he's an outsider. Well, not total outsider. All lost share and kinship, but he's new here. Yeah. He's new to the time and to his place. Does he try to mingle or does he make any effort to adjust himself or just be, as you said, angry about it, <laughs> doing nothing? It's not so much that he like mingles or actively wants to socialize with these people, more that he thinks it'll be useful. So he does it. Hmm, I see. Well. He certainly did find the code of summer useful, at least. Yes. That's very high mental, and that wouldn't that would say it would have reason. Perhaps not in rank, but the season would have recognized him as embodying wrath, understanding it. Yep. That's unusual in new changing, but why does he throw himself at wrath with abandon? Did did you when you look at other courts? 
Did he look at spring and was he disgusted by it? Was he tempted by it? By spring? Yes. Oh, definitely not. So he's trying to change a bit. Yes. Does he know if his keeper wants him back? He's obviously ready to fight. But Summer is not like the Overcourt. The Overcourt they try to keep away Faye, build their home back on Earth. But Summer, Summer wants to go back and burn everything down. Does he have a reason for that other than his wrath? Is it justified? Or does he just know that sooner or later they'll come? Maybe not for him, but they'll come. Yeah, I think definitely he's disillusioned and he does believe that they're going to come eventually. So, you know, may as well try to raise them to the ground while you can. But also it is a lot of his own personal bad bad at coping, anger. Well, the court are you for coping through some emotion. He chose anger and wrath. Maybe rightfully so. He had been taken away for so many years. He had been robbed of his life. His inheritance. And the few people he knew. Yeah. He's pretty angry about that, yeah. But now that he's back, he has to try to rebuild his life. He just cannot just live on anger and wrath. You said he had a, his touch on was a copy of Ovid Metamorphosis, but that's not enough to ground, re-ground him in the real world. It's not a place you can call home. It's some, someone you can, a human you can relate to. It's not, it's a book. Yeah, just, he's bad at coping. You don't have to have a positive or even a real interaction with the, well, you have a real interaction with Toshan, but it can be someone you watch, someone that reminds you of someone, or it can be your new home, like it's yours and you're not going to give it up. Yes. Okay. It's something to affirm, it's something to ground you in this world, in reality. Mm -hmm. It's something you're not going to, well, you're going to fight tooth and nail, keep it. Yes, all right. Summer is also, well, it's a martial court. But not everyone in the court is very suited to physical combat. Yeah. You know, social aggression and planning is also part of this. Where does he fit in all that? Is he a fighter? Is he someone with secure resources? Is he a strategist? Probably a bit of a strategist, but yeah, specifically with social things, you know, making connections, contacts. All right. I think it's interesting. We'll go to the next person who wants to go next. Yeah, I'll throw my hat in the ring this time. All right. So. There's a bunch of character. Okay, another dog shot. Okay, my character is, well, Nick, well Nick, obviously Nick Martin Lando, you know, and is, well, well, naturally, he was, he was, well, born and raised within the, uh, well, within what the locals refer to as Le Pauwai. Evangeline, you know, the Evangeline Parish, which is a bit further north, but a bit further north of the Iberia Parish where we are. And he was basically raised, is it, all alone he was raised by his mother and his maternal grandparents since his father, well, his father wasn't there. They, 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 the two of them kind of eloped back in college, but he vanished after he, well, he vanished after they graduated. Right. Anyways, later on, John he would find out that, well, all his life his mother his mother had told him that his father was dead, but turns out he was very much alive, 
I cheated on her with a dude. Uh, but basically, in a sense, in in of itself, paved the way for his career as a private detective. All right. So, when he was still human, did he make any promises? Maybe to someone from his work or to himself that were very important to him. Well, he. Well, he definitely promised himself that to basically find the truth no matter how ugly it is. All right. Is his family still alive? Are they still around? Well, yeah, his mother would, is definitely still alive. But let's just say things aren't so good because, well, his fetch ultimately ruined that for him in, in the end. Which I will elaborate on a little later once we get to All the fetch right. set. Who was he taken? Did he follow a lead and to a wrong door? Did someone took him by force? Did he did yeah. the edge draw him out? Yeah, his keep his keeper would actually lure him with a out with a case, and that case would well basically lead him to be. Lead him essentially lead him into a trap at word, and obviously ensnare him and basically send him tumbling into his keeper's domain, sort of like a dimensional trap door, really. All right. Once he was there, what happened? He yeah. was molded into a noun. Yep. Yeah. Can you repeat that again? He was. Transform into a hound. Yep, he was transformed into another hunt, a hunting hound since he was good at tracking. Very well. How do you feel about this thing, Arcadia? We discussed the stu steward of the empty sky before. His run is not pleasant. Not at all. Uh, well, let's just say he, he, not, he hates his time in Arcadia a bit. And basically, he was basically, as it's telling you, as a hunting hound, he was basically forced to rip to pieces quite a few innocent changes that have been set loose merely for the master's pleasure. You never really knew if it was for the master's pleasure. He didn't eat, as the steward is never really she, he, or them. It's barely human in form. Mimics humanity. But he never seems to do it out of pleasure. Never seems to have any real emotion aside from annoyance of deal perfection. Yeah. But nonetheless, you were murdered. You kill people. Well, maim people. Kill them. Dying was impossible. For a time, then, Trish and you grew closer. And together, you managed to find, well, when the incident happened, you managed to find your way back. But did someone, did something or someone guided you? The memory of someone, this particular scent, um, a fleeting dream, something? Or did you just follow Twitch? Yeah, for, for him, it would be even, well, yeah, yeah well. For him, it was for something back, obviously back in his mortal life, and for him, it would be the well, a, ch a child he himself had conceived with another w woman back, back before, well, back in his teenage. Years. All right. So, memory of a relative, of a child, even his child. Once he got out. Well, well, he and Twitch probably landed in the same area, but how did he adjust to what happened? Did the same amount of time pass for Twitch and him, but or not at all? Hmm. I'd say we, yeah, no yeah, clear, but I'd say we parted for a bit because uh, since, well, which would have been looking up his family in New Orleans, whilst I'd have been looking up mine back in Evangeline Parish. Did you phone them? But did, how, many, how many time passed? And did you ever truly disappear for them? No, 
No, I never tri- disappeared because my, well, just around the time of my, well, the time I fell into a trap, my keeper's trap, he was making my fan. From what was your fetch made of? The fetch Part was of your shadow, but... my cl- Yeah. The what fetch else? was made from my clothes, a few of my possessions, and, it, and pretty much the stuff I had in my rubbish bin at the time. <laughs> Have you seen your fetch? Have you seen you? Does it know? Do you think it knows? Or is uh, it oblivious? I've really only seen my fetch in the newspapers. And I suspect it probably it knows because if it was anything like me, it would I'd try to keep tabs. Why did you see me in the newspaper? Is he older than you? Do you still look the same as you did when you went in Arcadia? Or have you changed much? Yeah, I kind of still look from, uh, like myself, but there have obviously been... So, uh, obviously, some of my meand bleeds through into my, my appearance, such as with my being a wit of a winter coat, my hair, my dark hair actually has some silver streaks, and uh, well, my eyes, which used to be hazel, actually now... Oh, more of an um, amber color. But still, nothing too major. Nothing too major. Uh, my so... skin might be more of an olive, more, more, a bit more olive than it used to be as well, since my fur is pretty dark. All right. But... And as for how I saw my fetch in the newspaper, turned out that when I got back, my fetch basically snapped and. Basically murdered his child and baby mama. I see. Not your child, his child. No, it was yeah. You know, it was my well, child, but I was in a sense. No, no, as in my child, as in actually did the did the birds and the bee. Where is he now? In prison? Is he awaiting trial? Yeah, but that's. Last I heard, the fetch was still on the run. He's on the run, so he's somewhere. Yep. Do you think it's as clever as you? Yeah, I suspect it probably is. Do you think he is coming for you? I, th- I think so. What do you feel about his life? Well, your life. Do you want it back? Well, for where I see it, my li- my my the life I wanted to go back to was irre- irre- irrevocably screwed. Since well, nothing t- well nothing nothing takes to man's ma- name than murder, quite like murder, especially of his own family. All right, do you, what do you feel any emotion towards him? Hmm. Oh, yeah, is it a need fact, for you? I- yeah, towards a fetch. Hate, hatred, it really, since it did. Since it did. Well, naturally, most people would hate if something that murdered their t- child. I see. Why do you think it did? Did you just snap? Or does he have a, does he have a plan? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say. I'd say that to fetch snap because, well, something was fundamentally broken within it, so it was basically a ticking time bomb. I see. How do you adapt to know that you're back from Arcadia? You're still new, but surely you have found some way to cope with the trauma. Well, well, d- well, the win- it was for wind. Uh, yeah, I found myself in the winter core. Not since... yet in changing society. On your main one, little thing that remind you you're not dreaming and you're not crazy. Well, I started, I started coping by, well, trying to get back, uh, back into the frame of things in my line of work. And, well, for a time, I'm, I'm actually buried often all I felt within my work. Mm-hmm. Did you reconnect it with Twitch quickly? Yeah, I'd say that's 
Yeah. Yeah, I'd say we recon reconnected rather early on once, especially since I needed a friendly face now that, well, the face I used up used to have is a bit in ruined, if you catch me. Mm. Did you find out Changing Society by yourself, or did Twitch show you, or did someone else find you first? Yeah. I'd say Changing Society in the end found me. All right. Hey, man, these little goblin things really told me about some cool people. You want to come meet them? Man, they're, like, really nice. They even, like, gave me a pizza. I haven't eaten anything in, like, a week. Did you say come eat them? Or... <laughs> Well, I mean, they said something like, uh, come for d to dinner for them or something, but I don't know. Hmm. All right. Just, just moment, one moment. We're nearly done with characters. Um, you joined the Winter Court. Why? Are you grieving over your lost life? Are you really yeah. sad or are you just feeling numb? Yeah, at this stage, my ca I'd, say to, I'd say my character's definitely grieving for his lost life. If I and for also especially grieving for his dead child. Winter isn't just about sadness and grief. It's about calm, sometimes serenity, or, but it's about also information. Were you drawn to be suspended of the court first and then sadness came? Or the other way around? Winter is a small court. Most people do not want to be sad their whole life or de deal with sadness too much. But Winter Country found strength in it, and they are a parent bunch. They like to keep tabs on everything. What was most appealing? Was that last bit? What was most appealing to you? Uh, most appealing because, well, two things. One, because, well, I was among like-minded people who've, lo who've lost so much and, well, gre naturally grieve for it. And, well, given my job itself requires keeping tabs on folks, well, let's just say it's nice to be among kindred spirits in that regard as well. Are you depressed? Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'd say yes, but like a lot of people, who are depressed, he actually hides it behind a snarky demeanor. All right. Do you try to blend in with the changings? Or do you keep with your fellow courtier? Uh, I, I do keep with my fellow... Yeah, I do keep in contact with my fellow courtiers, because they might have also, also have in useful information. All right. So, I think we're going to last person on the list. Hi! So, tell us about your character. Alright, uh, my character. Uh, she's called uh, Lucie Berambo. Uh, she's of Cajun descent. Uh, and, uh, well, she, she grew up in a pretty poor family. Uh, in a, she had, like, tons of siblings. And also, like, half-brothers and half-sisters, because, you know, marriage, uh, divorce, marriage, tons of stuff happening. She felt kind of lost among them. And yes. that's maybe why she never really uh, listened to what her mother uh, told her to do. She didn't go to school that much. Uh, she thought it was way more interesting to just stay out, learn how to pick locks, pick pockets, pick basically everything she could pick. Um, was she was she purposely overlooked, or did she just blend in with the others? Uh, well, she was one of the most independent of the lot, so her parents didn't really have to take care of her. So they kind of, like, most of the time didn't really uh, ask her how she was doing, or, you know, closely look at what she was doing, because she seemed like she was doing well and she didn't need help. Hmm. When was uh, she so, yeah, she was a sweet rat, sweet rat. Uh, her childhood, and she learned how to play the fiddle uh, with, uh, you know, some um, <clears throat> other people in the Cajun communi community. 
Mm-hmm. And that's that's the only thing she really deeply enjoyed doing uh, with people. Uh, playing music. Uh, she usually was kind of uh, lonely the rest of the time. She liked to uh, boast about uh, being the best at climb- climbing fences and uh, getting into places and troubles she shouldn't get into. Uh, but she wasn't really social that much, apart from, apart from music. Did she make any promises that were important to her? Uh, let me let me think. Or did someone make a promise to? Uh, I think she might have been. Uh, you know, um, while she was a teenager, uh, she was in a band. Uh, you know, amateur band, mm-hmm. and the uh, the guy who played the guitar in the band, uh, who was older than her, and he promised that they would get away from the boring town and, you know, build a life together. But, you know, it didn't really turn out that way. The guy, um, you know, just uh, left, like, a lot of people in her life. And that's, yeah, she kind of took the habit of leaving as well after a while. You know, because it's easier than to get attached. All right. Uh, She got into adulthood, uh, never really got a real job uh, when she wasn't feeling uh, really... You know, like doing crimes, she would play the fiddle in the, in the streets. Kind of, maybe she didn't never saw it up as begging, uh, more as a fun way to make a few pennies. And when she really needed cash, she would steal. Um, she never really had remorse about it. I see. Um, she jumped from town to town, you know, making friends. Was she homeless? But what? Sorry. Was she homeless? Uh, she couch surfed a lot. She slept in the streets quite a few times, but she was, she, she's a kind of a nice, funny person. Uh, and so she usually could, you know, smooth talk her way uh, into someone's couch most of the nights. For a while, then after a while, they realize that she mainly steals money and they, you know, get her out of their home. When... Was she taken and how? Uh, when she was a young adult, uh, she, you know, she was playing uh, as usual uh, in a bar this time, and there was um, a few people that were in the bar listening to her. And at the end, the group came to her and said that you know they were looking for a musician to join their band, and you know, would she like to come with them? Uh, she was never the most um, prudent person, per se, mm-hmm. and she always thought she could get herself out of situations uh, with uh, either her smooth talking or uh, sneaking out. So she was like, yeah, you know what? Let's find out. And those people uh, turned out to be uh, loyalists who I took see. her into the hedge uh, to join a court per se uh the um, her keeper was looking for you know nice things to put uh to add to her receptions fancy receptions uh but not too nice uh, she didn't want to be outshined by the pre- people she had uh she had taken so she would find people that weren't really pretty or smart or even extremely talented and, you know, just put them on the side, have them be the flavor of the party, but she would still be the, like, centerpiece. That's how, where she ended up. Uh, she basically played the fiddle all day, all night, to exhaustion. And um, when she fell case, down, she would be beaten. I had uh, several questions. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Was she taken by the police or ever in dangerous situation where she was abducted before? What, sorry? Was she ever taken by the police or was she abducted before? Like, did she owe money to someone? And did she ever uh, get in serious trouble back on Earth? Uh, she, you know, got, got out of uh, trouble mo- mainly by fleeing away, going to different towns. Uh, and being unremarkable enough that she wouldn't stand out too much. She'd never got arrested 
if that's the question. Mm -hmm. uh, or kidnapped or taken before right. that. Um, so, what was her keeper title? Uh, I thought about the Duchess. That's a bit vague. I didn't really... I, I was thinking about it while you were talking to the other players and I didn't really... It's all uh, right. Find anything precise, but that's that's the beginning. That's a start. Yes. That's hard. Um, does she remember the loyalists who took her? Uh, they were uh, extremely charming. They weren't really uh, physically strong. Uh, at least she didn't think so. But they uh, completely fooled her, made her believe, you know, basically anything they wanted her to. Mm. Does she remember their faces? Their names? Their names, maybe not. Their faces, she would be able to recognize at least the one she spoke to the most, if there was one she spoke to the most among them. All right, next. Every changeling is molded for some reason. Mm -hmm. Why is she a darkling? Apparently, she, her job was to play and entertain. She mm -hmm. could have been a fairest or wizened. Yep. What, she, what was she darkling? Darkling living shadows, fear and mysteries. Was yes. her titles, domain, plunging into the darkness? Uh, no, but uh, everyone else had to be in the dark for, in order for the Keeper to be in the light. Hmm. So uh, was a soul job while well, doing music? A Wizen would have probably done a better job. And a forest, although could not a China keeper, but would probably have been more presentable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she didn't want them to be presentable or extremely good. So she why that? She wanted to be, you know, mediocre. Hmm. I see. Discreet and mediocre. Not bad, but... Forgotten. Yeah. Forgettable. She was what? the, you know, main beast of the parties. What was uh, a party likes? Were they very formal? Humanoid even? Could they be recognized or were they like... Did she entertain like gaping mouths or... Uh, it was very, um, I guess, uptight. You know, kind of a uh, sort of... Um, I'd Ooh. say maybe a renaissance in the aesthetic. Uh, but yes. the people she invited... Uh, uh, they what? had extremely strange appearances, but nobody ever comment commented on it. Were they gentries or were they old goblins? Was she too scared to be outshined to invent of others? Uh, I think it would be mostly hobgoblins. A uh, few, few phase maybe, if she was absolutely certain that they would not be as pretty as she was. Hmm. Mm. How was her domain? Was it beautiful? Was it dark, gloomy? Was it terrifying? Uh, it was, was I it guess... Consistent? It was consistent. Uh, like a, a sort of... I guess it looked like, it looked mostly like a, a you know, castle, mansion, uh, sometimes a very fancy house, household. Um, but the doors never seemed to lead to the same place twice. And she was the only one who, know, who knew how to get around the house. Did she socialize with any of her changelings while she was there? Or any servant? Or anything? Even a guest? Uh, I guess she did socialize as much as she could. Uh... Because since she was throwing parties all the time, there was little rest. But when she did, she tried talking to the servants or to the hubs or to anyone to try to find out uh, what to do, how to get out, because she most certainly did, didn't want to stay there. Did it work? Uh, I don't uh, No, She didn't use teamwork to get out. Uh, that was not really her thing at the time. Uh, she... T took advantage, uh, basically, of her, you know, her keeper's attention being solely focused on herself and how she appeared to her guests to sneak out. 
what obstacle did she have to overcome? In the hedge? Or uh, to get out of you know, the To get out, and then in the hedge. Uh, to get out, to she had to... Sneak all the way? And she had to Kill sneak someone? past uh, the guards, uh, the hobgoblin guards, uh, the other servants. Uh, some of them were eager to rat out uh, the people who tried to escape to gain favors. That um, she took care of them in advance. Um, not necessarily killing them, but did she make sure we would not be able to tell? Either by not seeing them or bribing them, bargaining. Oh, she would be a yeah. She would. She would bargain and bribe, uh, if if it was possible. Uh, and if it wasn't, maybe find a way to make sure they were asleep or somewhere else. Did a memory or something or someone guide her to the edge? Mm. Mm. I think uh, most, most probably uh, the memory of uh, not her family as people, but more her home as um, somewhere that she, you know, where she could be safe. And some anchor okay. that she had and she left behind mm -hmm. even before she was taken. And that's what brought her back. The idea that somewhere, somehow she could find this hearth. And, uh, you know. and when she did get back on earth, did she find it? Was it gone? It, was, uh, it, was, it wasn't gone per se. Her family still exists. She wasn't gone for long, uh, just for a few years. And it mostly corresponds to the time that uh, passed on Earth. But in the meantime, her fetch got into much bigger trouble than she used to. Uh, at home, did she go to a Shildun home? She tried, or, yes. Was it there? It did was. Did her family still live there? Uh... A part of her family, as some of the siblings. Did her recognize her, or had she sh changed too much? Uh, she changed. Uh, she got older, uh, and uh, her hair is darker. Her eyes are darker too. Um, but the thing is, she came there. She went there, and um, she didn't have the guts to get in. I see. She saw them, and she remembered how, um, you know, how she felt she didn't belong there, and how they would const constantly forget about her. And she told herself, you know, I don't care, even if that's not true. I see. Uh, I'm just gonna, you know, leave them to their life and uh, get my own life. And where did she went when uh, next? Did she have the plan? Did she meet other changelings? Did she seek them out? I get. I guess she did seek them out. Uh, she had heard of others escaping before, uh, not necessarily seen them uh, at her keeper's place, um, but she had heard of it. So she thought maybe maybe there are others. So yeah, she seeked them out. She went out in the search of this home that she didn't have. Uh, maybe find a new one. Is she still searching for its for a home? It's not been a long time. It's still f all fairly new. Uh, I I think, yeah, she did find, I think, a, a community, at least, since I I decided to put in the uh, spring court. Yes. Uh, she did find somewhere to settle down, but I don't think she is um, inter fully integrated yet. Uh, she still has very much of the, uh, you know, I don't need anyone else. I'm very well on my own, thank you very much, attitude. Even though yeah. she knows she knows it's not true <laughs> anymore. Yeah, it's out. Yes, but let's go back to your fetch for a moment. Yes. You said it was in bigger trouble than okay. she ever had been in. How does she know? Uh, she... Um, 
looked for information. She was wondering uh, if she was considered lost or disappeared. She hadn't any... She, she didn't know that. For a period uh, of time? Well, no, she was. She didn't disappear. No, she. Uh, her fetch while she wasn't while she was gone. Basically, got into uh, more and more serious crimes, until she was arrested uh, for murder and put in prison. Hmm. So she is in prison. She knows where. Yeah. She is. Is it a it or is it a she? Uh, she. So you can actually consider your f- his fetch, her fetch, sorry, mm-hmm. to be a person. Uh, she does, because she doesn't really have a concept of, she, she never met her fetch. I see. She, and she assumes that, um, you know, if it's someone who can commit crimes and impersonate her and look like her, it's, it's kind of, a, it's a person. She doesn't explain to herself how she looks like her. Or how it was made or done. Uh, she has theories, maybe. You know, maybe it's someone transformed as me. But the idea that it's a, a th- an object constructed. You would have known pretty that. soon when you joined the courts. Uh, maybe. I guess. Or maybe she doesn't talk about it. She doesn't like to. She doesn't like to think about it. No. Um... She would like to maybe get to know her later, but not Does now. She... Does she think she knows what she is? Does she think mm. Does she think she knows what she is? Well, it's complicated, but does she know you're a changeling and does she know it's a fetch? Um it's also position since you never met her, but I guess uh her hypothesis is that you know, she got into a lot of trouble, she estranged herself from my family, she basically made my life even worse than it was before, so maybe she knows and is actively trying to make my life worse somehow, but she can't be sure. Does she want her life back? Does she want to reconnect with her family? Hello? Hello? Someone? Hello? Is the mic not working? Uh, I think um, her mic is a problem. Oh, Hello? it's alright. Hello? Hi. Ah, I can hear you. Sorry, uh, connection uh, dropped. It's alright. <laughs> uh, what was the question, sorry? Does she want her life back? Does she want to reconnect with her family? Yeah. She's thinking about it. Uh... She... She's she doesn't not sure. have the courage to do so yet to mm. try because she's afraid that she'll just get rejected either because they won't believe her or won't want to have to do anything with her since they think she's in jail for murder. So that wouldn't be a very easy step to take. I see. Um, sh- you say she has a very... Uh, I'm taking care of myself, and I don't need anyone else. But she, yet she joined the court. Mm-hmm. Spring, yes. Why? Uh, the 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 whole I don't need anyone is kind of more of a facade than uh, anything else. She's trying to protect herself because she was left behind before, and she started uh, doing the same as to you know not get hurt. Before she was taken. And when she was taken, she realized, you know, a lot of people, well, when she came back, she realized a lot of people went through this too. And we're all, we're all vulnerable in some way. Uh, And she kind of wants to, she wants to have that sense of uh, family and friendship. It's something that drives her strongly. Is that how she's coping with Arcadia? Does she try to rebuild, to build herself a family? What does she do to remind herself she's not dreaming and she's not crazy? Uh, she plays music, and she plays music for people. Uh, before, she used to do it only to make a living, sort of. Uh, she enjoyed it, but it wasn't in any, any like generous in any way. Uh, but she got way better during her time in, the, in Arcadia. And she realizes that her music may, can make people happy and 
uh, and she can actually use it to give back to the people that may help her or um, you know that she can be generous even if it's a new concept to her what's what's her touchstone who is this person now what is this place uh it's uh, it's a place i guess i think it's a place more than a person uh it... it would be oh it's i guess it's both she sees it as a a place first it's a, a bar that is kind of struggling even really struggling mhm uh, and she is using the resources she has to help it like you know stay afloat why uh, because that's where um the people like the most like the people in the Cajun community that are in the most difficulty come to listen to music and to have a drink and to forget about their troubles and she believes that that's a place where she can that's one of the places where she can do the most good so it's about by, community yeah it's about her community maybe it's, she, yeah maybe it's need all these communities to know friendship uh, I'll yeah I'll think about it maybe uh one other thing <laughs> Yes. Since she came back, uh, she decided to use her talents, uh, you know, as music to make people happy, and she also decided to use them for, uh, you know, as a job. And so, one of the reasons she joined the Spring Court was to get some help uh, for that. I thought about getting her a. Let me see what's the name of the merit. Alternate identity, and you know, fairly not a very developed one, but I see. at least so that she doesn't use her jail person uh, name because that would be uh, inconvenient to sell music, make music, and sell music. So she has a revenue, uh, and it normal. makes makes her feel more responsible. I guess free is maybe a lot for a new changeling uh, with uh, plain oh. music. Uh, um, I, I I had some points left. I didn't really know what to do <laughs> them. But yeah, I agree. Um, we'll see. Uh, for now, I think that's good. Everyone knows who the other character is. They don't have to know everything about them. Maybe they didn't share much. But they at least know the act of their present themselves. Now, with the thing in New Ibaya, Iberia. The current field, the field of the White Willow, is fairly new in the sense that apparently the old field fell over a hundred years ago. Hundred years. So it's not whole it's not young by any means, but for changeling it can be a little, you know. Sort of a short time. How how long ago did you say the last one failed? A hundred years ago. Nobody really know why. You know, the field is not. The field is welcoming but careful. They have been burned sometime and they have been infiltrated one or two times in their history. They accept new changing but until they prove they not their worth but loyalty at least to free old they're on sort of probation periods even if they are in the court they're not second class citizens but they're watched and can have troubles getting serious relationships with other changing more established. None of you really, unless I'm mistaken, really took any merit like mental allies contacts, which We're is fine. We're all alone. Well, we, you all fairly new, and even if you may don't like it, for the time being, you only really have each other's. You had to form a motley. 
Motley is a core, is a cornerstone of the changing society. Motley is a group of changelings, and usually swearing an oath, but acting in concert, protecting each other, helping each other, sometimes feuding with each other. But we have the base. No changeling can really afford to be alone. Because when you're alone, you're vulnerable. So, what I would like now is for everyone to think about why the character would have joined with the others, what kind of pledge they would have formed of, and what relation they might have to the others. And by the others, I mean uh, the other characters. Not, uh, not the true fate. Hmm. Well, I guess I'd like to start off. I know uh, as his character and mine both already have their little relation, their little oath between each other. Yes. So it seems natural that they form a motley and then start reaching out to other people. It could be, yes. Which is a nice and friendly person. Who cares about others and would probably reasonably approach literally anyone? <laughs> it all really depends on how people react to this scrawny little person trying to strike up conversation with them. Well, as far as Varvin is concerned, he would probably be very. Are very happy to have someone to talk with and someone that maybe probably talks a bit more than him because sometimes he's got trouble forming full sentences and stuff like that. So having someone that talks fast and that's got a lot of things to say is it's it's cool. It's interesting. Hey, that's perfect. Twitch could definitely run his mouth for a while. <laughs> um you, you, yeah, Emrek, you said yes. that you had uh, a suggestion as to who could have found me in the bayou. Was it some? Did yes. you in the motley or no? Outside? Someone in the court. Okay. Someone important. Right. Out of King of Earth. As you can hey, see, I know this guy. Yes, you know, you know him. Most of you know the local kings and queens. I will show them to you now since Arthur came up. There's Arthur, king of Othum, a beast. You're not sure of his kith, but he has the ability to swim literally at the speed of, well, like a fish, really. He has a crocodile like mien. And he can hold his breath and stay invisible in the water for extended period of time. He likes to roam the bayou. He's, he's a scary guy to approach, and he doesn't discourage his uh, reputation. Cool. He thinks of himself. He doesn't hurt of a changeling, but... From what you gather, he likes to keep everyone on their toes. Then there is... Magnolia, the Queen of Winter. She's not from here. She's a young queen. She is a forest. A snow skiing forest. Magnolia is quiet, conservative, but enduring. When you haven't, well, witnessed winter yet. But she likes to get all of the court and she likes to do, the, to do a job with efficiency and discretion. Next is Juliet, the Queen of Spring. Juliet is old. Well, not hold, hold, but she's in her 50s, though she appears much 
more younger. And, well, she's a nice person, a bit self-centered. Uh, it's actually going to be, well, spring has passed, but there's some memory in the court that sort of spring are not yet really well aware of, but she seems tired of a position from what you can hear. And then there's Damas, the king of summer. Damas is a darkling. He's a bright one, strangely enough. You would not have thought you would be a king of summer. Damas is short. Damas is not muscular in any way. He's lean. He's nearly on wires and bones. He has scars over his head and body. He doesn't hide them. And, well, Ren might have heard that Damas likes to... He likes to have fights, but fights he's sure he can win, and fights that are over before they begin, if you catch my meaning. Cool. He's... Mm, he never talks about his past, but, well, not two of us. But those are the four rulers of the freehold of White Willow in New Iberia. They know of you. There are a few changelings in town. Changelings are a rare, com well, three changelings are a rare commodity. But you're not close to them. Ren may be more close to Damas than the other half of the seasonal ruler, mm -hmm. if only because of his mental, which is abnormally high for a new changing. Yeah. So yeah, Verum, um, Archer could have found you and brought you into the freehold. Maybe you feel owed to him. Maybe not. He didn't extract any price or any promises. Mm. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I probably feel a bit grateful to him, but everything's a bit hazy, so... That's all right. It's to be expected in your changing. Um, as for Bonds, since we're the only two that share a court, I guess we'd probably hang out a bit more with Lucy prior to forming the Motley, at least. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, uh, if you're fine with uh, uh, listening to me play music and uh, yeah. doing stuff. That's, that's great. Music is great. I, I feel like Probably Damien isn't going to be very friendly towards Varvin. Ren. Probably not. <laughs> Why is Ren part of his mother? Hmm? Why is Ren? for functionality, the usefulness of it. Very well. He doesn't very try to interact with the others, does he? Not much, no. Does he ever try to interact with Ren? None. S sorry. Is anyone trying to interact with Ren? Um, I'm, I'm confused sure. with names again. Ren is Damien's character. Oh, I, I thought Damien was. The name of the character. No, Damien's. No. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. Oh. I mean, he looks super cool. I, I, I would be at least curious to find out why he looks, he looks this cool. Where are you seeing him? All right. 
for now, it will suffice. You earn your monthly. You're not expected to have strong bone yet, but all monthly, nearly all, well, any monthly uh, that will last um, has been created around an oath. Refills can be anything from off to not hurting any others or supporting each other or rescuing someone if they should cut back into Arcadia. What kind of oath did you all swear? It's a pretty big deal. Break and what what is the term of that oath? What are the consequences of breaking it? I mean, probably some. You watch my back, I'll watch yours, right? Uh, that that's yeah, that's the exen extent of what I would sign. Uh, I I wouldn't go uh, go around signing. Oh, I'll get you from Arcadia if you get taken again. Thing right now, uh, not right away anyway. Yeah. Okay. Buy a guy dinner first. Yeah right. I'll guide well, you back out if you get back in. It's. Uh... I'm not sure you can get back out. But... Well, maybe then it's better to prevent them from getting back in in the first place. Yeah, I mean, we'll watch each other's back. I I'm fine with that. Watch each other's back, uh, keep harm from happening to the others. Yeah, as much as we can, I mean. Yeah. As, yeah. Can't keep a car from running you at over. Least, you at least try. Running. And uh, the the penalty for breaking the oath could be, I don't know. Um, well, first being being known as an oath breaker. This um, is the weird. Make sure everyone knows when someone has broken the oath. That's that's already a given. Yes, it is a given. The weird does not like cheaters. I don't know. What's a good penalty? That's up to you. If you leave it open, then the weird has full extent to exact his vengeance. Oof. Mm. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I would have, be happy with that. Well, death then, because it's preferable to the weird doing whatever it wants with you. Death <laughs> is pretty serious, and well... Uh, a bit mm -hmm. too too powerful for breaking yeah, no, up. How about giving us some examples of like how powerful this should be then? Well, some examples include um, a penalty to all contract rule within the land held by a foursome leader, social penalties on the notoriety condition with member of betrayed group or court, gaining the sick tilt during the season of a court he betrayed, but that's for court of course, but that can be anything. That can be something, something impairing his magic, something impairing their physical well-being. It carries repercussion. It's uh, a condition, basically. Okay. It can be a condition or not. S social penalties or a social condition would sound good to me. Like, uh, like a social penalty that can be rep like a, a sort of a, 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 mark, a betrayer's mark for, for that social penalty. I'd... What what did you say? Yeah, I said a, 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 tra a traitor's mark if you break the oath, which, mm -hmm. which is the source of the penalty. Yeah. I don't know. Personally, I kind of like the idea of a physical penalty, just because it feels nice and uh, punishing. Yeah, well, mm. a, a traitor's mark that actually hurts you, like you get, I don't know, a one, one dot of resistant lethal or something like that. I don't know if that's 
too strong, maybe? Oh, no, it would be fine. I remember that. All right. That sounds good. And the, so, and, like, and the, one the less mark. armor or something? And the mark would be... Uh, the resistant lethal, I think, is just, like, you got a, a point of damage and you can't, you can't heal it until no. the... Uh, until the, 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 the penalty is expired? Yes. Which, I like that. Um, yeah, I like that too. Coming back from an off-breaking requires a, a character to make amends to those we, he are wronged or broke his oath to and uh, go to an adventure to gain the favor of the weird back. So it's a big deal. Uh, but... There are benefits uh, for uh, sorry for sticking to an oath. I will read you some of the benefits. We can invent another, but some of the benefits you uh, pre mostly can have would be once per chapter. So in chapter is a session. They can treat a contract role as a teamwork option if all participants possess a contract. Or member of a monthly can meditate for one turn and distribute their collective glamour evenly among the members. Weirds can see any leftover glamour of a stife. Or once per chapter, when representing the monthly, a member can use the highest relevant social skill possessed by any member and apply the effect of merit any merit or key blessing presented in the group. The character doesn't need to remotely permission when representing them, but consequence for the character action came down to the, upon the monthly as a whole. Interesting. Um, so it's systematically a once per chapter thing? Not always. Like the second one, you can... You could meditate for one turn at any time to okay. yeah to I, distribute your glamour. I like the glamour distributing. I was also thinking maybe um, a flat out passive bonus that applies to actions made in defense of another uh, motley member. Sure. Like either a, f a bonus or having an exceptional success on three instead of five. Um, I'm I'm on. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is also a way to farm beats. So if mm. you're not if you're not okay with this, mm. I'm not sure about that. That's a bit All powerful. Right. For social tools. Mm. You have to decide collectively. Yeah, I'm just trying. I'm trying to pin down like the power level of it and figure out something. Uh, real quick, which two people were uh, in the same court? Julie and Varvin, the Darkling and the Beast, um, Grisel Grinder and the Darkling. Uh, Nightingale. Nightingale. That's me. Uh, what's the character name or nickname? Uh, uh, Ren Fiddler. Uh, Fiddler. Yes. Fiddler. Okay, so Fiddler and Varvin then. Yeah, you can go for Varvin. It's <coughs> pronounce it the French way. Same court. Oop. Oop. There we go. Yeah. Being a Cajun, does Fiddler speak any French? I'm sorry? Being a Cajun, does Fiddler speak any French? Uh, she probably does, yes. Yeah, that would be a bit of a... Probably could be a bonding point with Martin since being gay, Louis, Louisiana Creole, he speaks French as well. Oh, that would be cool. But we probably don't have the same accents or, or any kind of, uh, you know... Um... Yeah, slang in common, but yeah. Understand, understand each other all the same, really. Mm -hmm. Since we're talking about 
like understanding each other and stuff maybe um one of the benefits from the oath could pertain to either always understand each other perfectly or meaning that you can actually talk to someone and say talk to one of the, your motley mates and say something while in presence of other people but they'll understand exactly what you mean even if it's completely different from your sentence no no that's uh yeah, that's not so no, no secret language what about a uh sort of sympathetic connection or a uh, long-range communication kind of thing you could we're always connected together somehow you could know the general direction uh, of each other and if you're in the age or on earth yes that could be really useful and not overly uh the point because you still need to find them you just know approximately where they could be i was thinking of maybe adding if if we take something that uh you know in, in this general ballpark we could have some sort of alarm system like uh, for example spend a point of glamour and send a you know a signal basic signal being hey help or i'm in danger or something not a sentence but a sense of danger that you send through the motley so the others know that uh, you need help or you're in trouble yes once per you... chapter yes yeah i would allow that but you would not give any direction or any information or whereabout just that you are in danger yes nice all right yes um we will need to formulate the hoof uh but next you all sworn off to your court when you join them but you you're technically part of a freehold and as well should have sworn a hope to never betray the freehold under your own volition for doing that you have a plus one dice real to navigate the edge in territory held by the freehold. Did you swap this off? Yes. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, probably. All right. Well, uh, do you guys want a character journal or an out of character journal? To not fi mm -hmm. things down. Yeah, I think a journal might come in handy for remembering things. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh... All right. So all that's setting up. <clears throat> so we got some bonds already, and let's see if I have all the ones that we're aware of. Barden and Twitch have a bond because they escape together. Twitch and Varhoon talk a lot together. Varhoon and Fiddler are part of the same court. Uh, so that leaves uh, Ren to connect with someone, I think. It would. This, did I miss anything? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. So how and who would Ren connect to? I don't really know. Oh god, how and who? What does uh, Ren do like uh, in his daily life or you know that could help us find out who he could have met or you know be acquainted with? Well, he's a uh, definitely not parting, but he's still interested in things like art and poetry and seeing those things. Mm. So is anyone else academic or intelligent or uh, strikes up good conversation? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a big laugh for everyone, then, isn't it? We're all dummies. Mood. Um, I don't know. Maybe Julie. Uh... Well, I, I'm the I'm the, I'm like the closest person you can have to someone who likes art. Um, in in this situation. Maybe I think. yeah, he enjoys your shows 
especially, or? I mean, I, 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 I am a superb uh, fiddler, <laughs> but apart from that, I, I don't know poetry, but you know, I, I enjoy you coming through my shows. Yeah, fiddling's an art, and if you're really good at it. Oh, yeah. I am, I am. You should come to my uh, next concert. Um, <laughs> with a level, this level of expression, you're pretty good at poetry, even if you never tried it. I, I would be pretty good at it, I think. I don't know about it, but you know, if you gave me a poem, I, I would be pretty good at it. Cool. All right. All right. So everyone at least has some connection, line-like some... connection. Yes. <clears throat> if we wanted to make like a complete <clears throat> circle here. We could have Ren have a connection to Martin in some way. Huh. But everyone at least has a reason to know at least one other person, maybe two. As I said, for now, you don't have to really know each other well or like each other. Mm -hmm. You are together because it's instinctive for humans, and you're still somewhat humans to band together. Mm -hmm. You may or may not be new, but your condition is new. And, you know, it's nice to have other people to talk, and that you can, well, that do trust you. Even if you're not the sort of people to trust others, you have a know back by magic to back it up. Yeah. I mean, they're, they are in the same boat as we are, and they're all waiting for probation to be over so we can uh, be official citizens and whatever. So, you know, at least we can Indeed. hang out. Indeed. Now, we still need to figure a few things out. Do you guys... Have a place for yourselves. Well, uh, yeah, I was thinking, do you want to share a hollow or not? I've yeah. got... Can, uh, do you want to pool our dots? Do you want to wait until we get acquainted a little better so we can buy a hollow dots for a secondary one that we got in common? I definitely am always all for that. However, mm -hmm. my character uh, has a park bench. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's probably pretty attached right to now. the park bench. Uh, no. So. Comfy park bench. It, <laughs> it's not even comfy. It has, like, these uh, dots all over it, you know, that make it really uncomfortable and all. Is it one of those horrible ones with a bar in the middle so you can't lie down? Yeah, he has to kind of, like, stretch his back over the top of it. <laughs> oh, this is splendid. <laughs> must be really good for your back. Hey, I mean, uh, I, I have I have those resources dots that I'm not gonna use because it doesn't make any sense. But I, I I'll still have a few to spend, probably on a place to stay. But we can pull them together if you want. I don't know if uh, I'd be comfortable sharing a hollow with you all, even if you're probably cool. The question right. is, are you comfortable being alone? That's and also true. And probably defenseless. Oof. Hmm. I mean, defenseless doesn't sound good, obviously. You can have an ang you, you can have your private. Uh, even without resources, you are assumed, unless you don't want to, to have a basic necessities of life covered, uh, like house, maybe a cra everything is crappy if you don't have any resources, but you can still, um, but you can still uh, have a big place of your own, a meeting spot, or you know somewhere when one of you can sleep or hang around if they want to, but. Nothing is really required. But of course, changeling, uh, especially it's changing fresh out of the edge. Well, not f you have a bit of time, but they usually, usually want to be sure you're not going to get taken back.
So in, in, in my case, I've got one dot of hollow that is likely just a hole in the mud of the hedge. <laughs> like it's it's more of a it's more of a lair than it is really an apartment. And he's well, got these piles of stuff that he's picked up at the bottom of the water, like little bits of glass, uh, pieces of, of piece, pieces of cars that shine in a way that he likes particularly. And I don't think many of you would like to share this kind of environment. He's really happy to have guests, but you know, it's not exactly the comfiest. Yeah, I want that size all that doesn't buy something for the size. Only have enough space for two changelings to comfortably sleep in it. Right. Well, I've, well, I've got a two dot hole. Well, I've got a two dot hole, and that comes with size matters. Oh, so you got a big place then? It's only a one dot size matters, but yeah, it's a bigger place. I mean, what we could do is have, uh, like, one holo that we share that is m not necessarily the place we live in, but some place we could, like, find each other, or if we're in danger, go to, but not necessarily, like, sleep in all the time or and whatnot. Indeed. Like a safe place. Mm -hmm. That could be interesting. Doesn't need to be big or extremely comfortable. It can also be, like, just a place in the material world that we don't invest XP in for now, but we we settle on I don't know a, a, a an apartment uh, or above above your bar or something like that where we meet up and then maybe we can add some stuff to it. But it would be it would be good to have a hangout. At the very least. Right. Yeah. So let's see. So right now I have down that Martin has two and Varvun has one. Did anyone else have any actual dots that are capable of being contributed, whether or not they are? I, I, I shall have some at some point, one or two. All right, you're playing Fiddler? Yes. So eventually. Eventually. Um, when, uh, you you, you can even switch some of your resources dots. Yes, that's the that's the idea. Yeah. Um, your upkeep merit allows you to have upgoblins as a security measure. Cool. Uh, oh, nice. In your hollow, uh, as long as uh, well, Twitch is part of your monthly course. Nice. You get uh, handy friends, uh, Mister Twitch. I do believe you have to buy the upgoblins, but uh, they. They are, um, yes, they can alarm you if anyone tries to enter. They are basically no, they are friendly, uh, as friendly as an obgoblin can be. Um, yeah, yeah. hob alarm is the merit. It is. Um, yes. Right. Of course, a hollow can be the size of a tiny cave or the size of a small village, if you want to. It's, it's really up to you to how your hollow looks like, or you construct it, or you, if you put anything in it, if you want to access it easily. That depends. I mean, some place that we could access easily uh, would be more important if it's a like a hangout or a safe place that we don't use daily, but some place where we can meet and eventually hide uh, if you know there's danger. It would be nice to have uh, easy access, not necessarily comfort or size, and an alarm. But I think that's it, right? For me, uh, that would be my main concern. The easy access. Uh, feature is kind of costly for now. Yes. 
Yeah. But th that would require us to pull our, all our dots and then we'd still have only room for two, I think. Right. Uh, and as, were you going with one or two for size matters? Yeah, I went with one. Okay, so it'll fit all of us comfortably at the least, which is yes. good enough. Okay. Size matters one. Let's see. So oh, yeah, size one. Yeah, but the thing is, how many dots do we have in total? Uh, three. One, Assuming three. Ren has none. I could donate one. Then four. Uh, how many do you have? How do you mean? Like, how, how many hollow dots do you actually have? Me? None. At the moment. none. <laughs> okay. So, but they... so, Ren is also at zero, then. They could lower a bit of a mantle if I think that's uh, all. You you can rearrange your merits if you want to. That's uh, really up to you. I don't want to influence your sorry your, <laughs> your right, choices. I'm just kind of working with what we have right now, just trying to keep uh yes on it. Actually, from a, a purely like uh, accounting point of view, we need if we want easy access and room for everyone, we need. Uh, Five dots. One dot of hollow, and one dot of size matters, and three dots for the easy access, which might not be needed right now. Not ne not not necessarily right away. Yeah, if I lower my mantle some, I can donate two dots, and I give two. From don't, my don't necessarily gimp yourselves because of it. We, this is th this can be a goal too. This can be something we work towards. <laughs> yeah, and the team, team got always one way to get the Martin moving as well. Right, um, so early on, I guess Hob Alarm would probably still be good because we actually have access to it. And maybe just making yeah. it comfortable for people to exist in would be good too. With or without like the easy ability to find it or escape out of it. That would make it like a convenient living space or meeting place like we were talking about. So Remember, in, in um... A hollow, uh, all hollow are in the edge. Every one of them. Um, a hollow has some innate protection. It is as safe as a place can be against a fae. Um, your hollow can be of, can have any shape, size, form. You can have shaped it to hard work together, or you can have found it. It's really up to you. Hmm. I was having this kind um, of idea that if we manage to, if, if we get enough dots to buy the easy access, we could actually have worked to make Varvin's burrow larger and actually into something habitable and not just in inhabitable and not just a hole in the ground. So yes. the, 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 the hideout, like the physical entrance of the hideout would be out of the city, out of um, notice. And it would be a good way if we get into trouble to get away from the city and stuff like this. Also remember, you can own multiple hollows. Yeah, absolutely. And we can also link them with trods, I think. Yes, you can. it's a lot of work, but you can. Hmm. Um, what else? 
Well, f first, like maybe let's try and 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 put some things to a vote. Like, do you, do you guys want it in or out of the city? Uh, out of the city is just fine with me, and so is out in. Out is fine. Yeah. Out is fine. I mean, yeah. yeah. So. So let's go for something out out in the bayou. Like maybe maybe kind of a shack in the middle of the bayou that is actually a lot larger on the inside than it is on the outside. I uh, remember sort of beached boat or something. I, I, I really like the, the yeah beached, beached boat, boat is really idea. nice. And it's even got a hole in the hull so I can go swim immediately. <laughs> remember, it's in the edge. It's hidden in the edge. No, yeah, I meant like the the en the entrance is in the sing in the beached boat. All right, and it, it's something that we can still. So you can probably like Julie and um, Ren can probably just give one dot each, like All resources right. and mantle, so we can get the easy access. Okay. This is a low of five dot, which is a rather nice low, as far as they come. What does it look like? So, and I'll put mine, and you had two, Martin, is that right? Yeah, Martin has two, you have one, and currently size matters is at one. So you already had size matters. Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, so we've got seven dots. No, six dots. Wait, where the um other three come from? Uh, you got you got three in total. Yeah, we have uh three total. And uh, I guess I'll Wait. just go down the list. It's like I'm I'm doing this on the mysterious note, by the way. Oh. Yes. Huh. So Marvin, you have one. Martin, you have two. Fiddler will get some eventually. I have a park bench, and Ren has nothing. Uh, I'll, get, I've... Uh, I'll get you one. One is good. I have one. I've I've had a, a handout for you to tinker with for you all. I'll transfer uh, all that. Do you want size one, size matter one or two? Uh, one is fine for now, I think. All right, so one and easy access. So that would be four dots of hollow that you need, not five. I thought these were add-ons and you needed at least one dot of hollow. Yes, but when you get, no, when you get one dot of hollow, you get one dot to, to spend. Extra, ah, extra. I, I yes. think those like you had to spend more. No, to no, get no. Add-ons. You get a number of points to spend equal to your holo rating. Ah, that's that's much much easier. Yes. So yeah, we've got three. We already can get the easy access between uh, the both of us with Martin. Right. It would just end up being a rather cramped space with no living conditions. No, it would be a space with uh, five to six. Uh, it would be the size of a small a, sm a house, small house. If it has size matters. House. If it has yes. size matters. So no, we we have. Um, oh yeah, we ha we've got a three dot with size matters between the both of us. And we just need one more dot. Yes, you need one more dot. Yeah. I, yes. I, I, I said I, I, I give one. I have one. Mm -hmm. I'll lower my yeah. resource Great. to two. Great. So let's go with um, four dots with the easy access and the um, size matters. Nice. Awesome. We have a panic room. <laughs> no, you have a panic house. A panic house, yes. Ah, wonderful. And yep. soon to so... be a panic manor. 
no permanent interest, we can get to it anywhere, and it actually has space. Yes. That's pretty good. It is. No fridge, though. You can have a fridge, but who knows it would f if it will, will work uh, in the edge. You probably need to get some special Freezing sort of never, never melting ice from who knows where. You can probably find that at a goblin market. I mean, we need it to keep the beer cold. That's obvious. You have the place is livable. All right. Uh, next. Wonderful. So. Um, I wanted to go quickly over some more mechanical as well, more mechanical oriented aspect of characters. Contracts. Um, I would like, if willing, that people uh, share their favorite regalia, if they want to, and what sort of thing of well thing they want to do with the power, so to so we don't end up with three people who want to be the better, best at sneaking and we end up disappointed. You can, if you want to, like if you all of if all of you want to be sne sneaky changing, I have no problem with that. But I want to make sure everyone is uh, okay with what's uh, going on. Right. Let's go over what we can do then. Uh, I know really well what Twitch is going to do. Twitch runs really fast, guys. <laughs> yeah. You cannot catch him. You can't escape from him. You can also reasonably fight, given what he was doing in the hedge. He's got uh, to, to do. He can walk on walls. He can run really fast. He can go anywhere he wants in the hedge. He can leap building to building. He can go through mirrors. He can look through mirrors. He can uh, get claws and whatever Talon and Wing does. Talon and Wing does a whole lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, gain an animal then. characteristic to attack or gain a mode of transportation. Uh, I was uh, curious about a thing. Um, yes. If I use Talon and Wing to assume the mode of uh, transportation of a catfish, do I get yes. water breathing too? I, I'll have to ask a question on the forums. I am not sure. Okay, that's uh, that's your ruling anyway. But since they didn't mention it in the contract, yes, they going? didn't. Um, because. I guess it's modest uh, transportation is swimming, but does that include breathing underwater? I am not sure. Oh, um, or maybe if you think that having the plus 10 to speed and the water breathing is too much, maybe just move at normal speed and breathe underwater? I don't know. Really okay. don't know. Um, although... Um, if you want chrysalis, uh... for now, like I, th I think Varvin's a bit, um, like he's been a catfish for long enough. He he doesn't. It it would probably make him really uncomfortable to assume a beast form again. I I understand, but a uh, red talons and wings is pretty close to it. But um, uh, I'd say. You'll need, you would need chrysalis to really, you can hold your breath underwater and probably for quite some time because you're a big fellow with a lot of stamina. Uh, but I don't think you, you only gain this swimming speed of 10, which is really good. Uh, but yeah, still faster than normal people run. So you would need to use chrysalis to really uh, gain gills and. Uh, Breathe underwater. Wonderful. Not Great. Uh, so not with not with talon and wings. I'm sorry. No, it's 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 all right. Just wanted to to clear that up. Yeah, of course. All right. So I got kind of like a survivalist slash perfect town. What what exactly does Varvin do? Um, he's also deceptively fast. He's got talon and wing. He's also got the seven league leap contract 
So technically, if I activate both at the same time, I get a plus 20 in speed? Um... Because you can stack contracts or not. I don't know, uh, actually. Uh, I feel... It do- no, no, it doesn't... Mm, wait. Mm. Wait, 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 let me see. Contract. Mm-hmm. I can't. That changes how fast I can go, but... It's... Oh, he's, he's already deceptively fast. He's really, really strong in, when it comes to um, his base traits. He's really... Uh, He's really uh, resistant to almost anything. He's got like a base stamina of seven for determining poisons and intoxication. Yeah, um, I just nice. so a uh, contract change your base speed to ten. They do not add ten to your speed, so they would not stack for these purposes. Okay. Although ten is ten is really fast. Ten is a car. Holy. And I go 13 without modification. And me 14, I guess? Uh, and you, I, I, base I speed get... is 5 what? as a human, or 6. Uh, no, oh, it's 5. You mean yeah. the, the, factor, the species factor? Is yes, that... the species factors go to 10, so twice your uh, current... No, so yeah, w- what I meant is I also have the beast um, add-on, the beast catch for 7 league leap. That which, yes, which uh, gives a, a flat out uh, plus ten, so he can be really. Oh really, really yes, 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 yes. Yeah. that I, does stack. Yes, a catch stack. Uh, I thought you were talking about two different contracts. My bad. No, so, no. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I was mistaken, but yeah, he can run a lot. No, no. Than yes. Car. Oh yes, you can run a lot faster than a car. Yes. Although, so, um, I think keep in mind. Uh, um, yeah, so. You changing aside from the mask does not doesn't have any abilities to really hide their power when they use them in front of humans. Mm-hmm. Um, they do not have uh, like vampire have a masquerade or organization to uh, to protect to re uh, control information to some extent. I mean they have the winter court uh, in some region, but. It's better not to draw attention. It's better not to draw attention because not be, well because it might attract humans who might be hostile or want to get something out of you, but also because people talk and the other might cut wind of what's happening. Right. So you want to stay secret. Uh, so yeah, and uh, just so I finish with Varvin, we so yes. we can move on to the of others. course. Sorry. He's right. also so his favorite re- regalia are steed and sword. He's got a few <laughs> contracts to get super strong and get really mad, like Red Revenge and Might of the Terrible Brute. Um, he's also really good for for someone this this f- frankly stupid. He's also really good to find mm-hmm. his way in the in the hedge. He's got. A bit of uh, he's got a, a merit that he's got hedge sense merit, and he's mm-hmm. got one. pathfinder that allows him to find his way in the hedge pretty easy. And finally, overpowering overpower powering dread, so he can he's a big fellow, he's intimidating, and he's well a gristle grinder. So th- there's something to work with to intimidate people into le- leaving him or his friends alone. And that's about it. Very nice. All right. Um, Fiddler, uh, you know, she, in general, I tried to center her contracts around um, seeming like someone who's always kind of uh, lucky. Like She always seems like she gets out of situations pretty easily. Um, she can, uh, she has ch- changing fortunes to affect luck directly. Uh, she can uh, get invisible to escape from situation, and she she can dodge pretty well with fey cunning. Uh, she also has no the competition because she likes to, uh, you know, be better at people uh, than people at things, especially games. 
Uh, and when she really gets in trouble, she can unravel the tapestry and, uh, you know, redo the t last 10 seconds. And if there isn't a door to escape, she can make one with hidden reality. So, you know, she, she always find a way to get what she wants or where she wants to be. All right, so that covers like a whole lot that uh, we definitely didn't so far. So that's really good. Okay. Sneaky, lucky, and tricky. I am, yeah, sneaky, lucky, and tricky. That's, yeah, that's a good... I like it. I, I'll keep it. Uh, and I'm fast as well, but not as fast as you. Um, just 11, which it, it's it's nice, too. It's still pretty fast. <laughs> oh, yep. yeah. We, we are a fast crew. Oh, okay. Uh, for Mark himself, given his profession, he is naturally pretty sneaky in swift and is oh, i actually think a lot of his contracts look like that to start okay his favorite regalia are the steed being a beast and the nip and the mirror regalia he has the pathfinder contract which helps with finding stuff in the head it's because that's how you make we can barely hear you hello hello it's a bit better how much of that did did you not hear? Um, I I did fine because I'm uh, I'm accustomed to it, but I don't know if he ever did. I really didn't catch anything. Same. Yeah, damn cool. Damn t-shirt. Okay. Uh, the same. Given his profession, Martin's a very sneaky and agile fellow. Not quite as fast as our other two beasts, but he's still pretty fast. In terms of contracts, that's his favorite regalia is the steed, being a beast, and mirror regalia. In terms of con actually, now then, he has the pathfinder contract, which will help with navigating the hedge, hedge and, and being a beast, sensing of any other hedge creatures are nearby. He has a glimpse of a distant mirror, useful for spying on people. Well, host hostile takeover, which is good for breaking and entering. And being a beast also get, ensures that the beast in the house is also pretty calm. He also, there's also chrysalis, which means it can take animal shapes. And being a, being, a, being a beast, he has four animal shapes. That's a lot of shapes. Yeah, he can assume the form of a owl, an alligator, it is Louisiana, <laughs> a cat, and he, one... And he, and his mythological creature is a hippogriff. Nice. Then there's the skin mask contract, which well allows him to, be cut, to assume a form of any well anyone he looks upon. And then there's the ice queen's call a winter contract, which is basically summoning up a blizzard. Blizzard in Louisiana. That's gonna raise some eyebrows. It would, yeah. Winter will have its way. Yeah. Winter is coming. And remember, global warming, bigger storms, am I right? Weird weather? Ah, uh, don't tell me about it. I've, I've been in two hurricanes and up close. Yeah, mood. And I'm also, and Martin's also pretty handy in, well, hand-to-hand -hand combat. As for his merits, he has two dots in mantle, which in this case is a winter mantle, two dots in resources, and a dot in professional training, and obviously you know of his two dots in hollow. Also has language, glamour fasting, goblin bounty, so some of the goblin fruits, and trained observer. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, what, what about Wren? Uh, Wren, sorry. Wren Ren yeah. has a mostly, yeah, um, contracts, right? Yes. Cool. Contract. Well, what can you do in, in general? And what do uh, you want to do? Well, I had also given Wren hostile takeover, but we have that. And it was kind of weird anyway, but he's got paralyzing presence, um, so he can 
I guess, essentially stun people by being himself. Stunningly uh, beautiful. Yep. Um, baleful sense, which allows him to sense someone else's wrath and what the object of their wrath is, and then twist that around, get them mad at something else. Uh, child of the earth, hearth, which I forgot the effects of, actually. Hold on. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you remove uh, the temperature, extreme temperature on you, or oh, create yes. an extreme area of temperature. You manipulate heat around you. Yes. On you. Mm -hmm. Okay. No and... puns. I didn't intend any puns. So he is so hot that just being around <laughs> him, oh, God. you know, makes us burn. <laughs> Um, and for the uh, two royal contracts, he's got fiery tongue, where he insults someone so hard they take damage. That's um, pretty rad. And uh, discreet summons, which allows him to summon either an object or a hobgoblin, I think. Oh, this yes. one is so perfect. Yeah. So, so what are his favorite regalia? Crown, obviously, but what is his second favorite regalia? See, I actually had forgotten to pick a second favorite. It's all right. <laughs> you pick a lot of um, summer court contract, which are fine. Uh, you can choose now which uh, other regalia you'd like to have as favorite. Um, Jewel specializes in manipulation, right? Jewel, um, the ephemeral lies, so being discreet, and... Manipulating the physical, uh, yes. Hmm. Jules is the wizened one, is that it? Yeah. Yes, it, it is. is. The one. It's basically like reworking objects and hiding things, things like this. Yeah, no, that's not quite, no. Moving times, it's, it's a really, well, there's not any wrong regalia to pick, honestly. Sorry about my birds. Yeah, I'm just trying to... <laughs> it's fine. I had birds, too. Um, what do you want to do? That's the thing. I think... Oh, God. With him and his personality and character, I think probably sword. Hmm. Because is he a very physical... No. But there are sword contracts that allow for, uh, like, presence rolls. Dice. Sorry. Does he... Presence. Mm, yes. But then that's um, just that's... like paralyzing presence. Yes. Um, sword is a bit more destructive. Yes. Um, hmm. You could go sword. Uh, shield is also nice. Uh, it would cover like um, if Ren has like any desire to defend himself or uh, you know protect himself, but mm -hmm. he seems pretty bent of attacking uh, rather than defending. So sword, yes, yeah, sword could definitely work. Does anybody have suggestions? <laughs> yes, so just sword could be fine. Uh, it really, yeah, it really depends just on your intent. Like, you're definitely setting yourself up to just be like a hot social character who talks instead of fights. Any kind of defensive measure would probably be good for you to just have in general. Yeah. Some way to get out of something that you can't deal with. Okay. Well, we thought you can, but it's it involves smashing the thing you don't want to deal with. But there's, there's also, like, more, um, how do you say, abstract concepts of sword. Yes. I feel like. And there's but... al always the possibility of homebrewing contracts. Um, sword is very forthcoming. It is very focused. It's forceful mm -hmm. and aggressive. 
then so. then again there's also stuff like primal glory that is i i think would work pretty well with ren oh like this, for sure yeah. like wreathing yourself in flames uh Dest- d- uh, or touch of wrath like destroying an object just by touching it you don't even have to apply force you just touch the thing and it falls apart yeah all right yep i'll go sword all right nice uh same with that uh, i believe unless any of you have any question uh that we are more or less done for a session zero yeah and um, it does look like we all have like a very diverse party to work with too nobody's really stepping on anyone's toes no we got um, three pathfinders at the worst but i mean that's not a bad thing to have either I, i'm not I, i'm not I, mad at that i am not mad at that at all. <laughs> yeah we Never can split have. up into like as many parties as we want really yes um i would like um uh some things uh for you to do if you can have the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have written or if you have been thinking about the questions uh, I have asked you, uh, I would like uh, to have the answer in written form somehow. Um, yeah. Otherwise, we can discuss it. Um, yeah, if you can place the questions back in a written form, I can probably do that pretty quickly. Yes. If yep. you have any uh, more detail about your touchstone and any pictures, <clears throat> I would be happy to have them. Um, for those of you who haven't still figured, quite figured their keepers, um, I will be in touch with you. And I, uh, for those of you who have a fetch and wanted to interact with you, uh, I will be constructing your fetch. Fetches? Fetches. Fetches. Uh, Fetches, Fetches. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm going to England uh, next week. Um, I think I might be able uh, for uh, about three weeks. I think I might. I'm, normally, I'll be able to play well there. Uh, I'll notice you as soon as I have a confirmation, or if I don't have a confirmation, I will notice you as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I really didn't thought of that until uh, I knew I knew the trip was coming, but I really didn't find that when I put up the recruitment ad and the fact that I might be gone for three years after session zero, I was kind of like, oh shit. Uh, so I'm sorry, really sorry about that, but it should be fine. Okay. Um. So. Uh, this was session zero. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Um, Wonderful, yeah. this sounds like a great start. I'm yeah. Hyped, yeah. hyped for the... <laughs> Good. Um, if you have any questions, remarks, or things you want to say to me, you can always leave me a message or uh, 